Yeah! Welcome to Ace Attorney! Your Honor! That statement contradicts this evidence! Can you always do this, Phoenix? <laughs> There's never anything contradictory. Uh, really? Check and overrode. Try to think again, please, Mr. Wright. Oops, that didn't go so well. Basic thing you need to commit a murder. Murder? <laughs> we were young. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Witness! If she was premeditated, why would she bring... Why would she use somebody else's knife? Why would she actually have her own? <laughs> Hang on. Yes, that's that's pretty pretty self -explanatory. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's self-explanatory. I think my one made way more sense. Why would she leave a wallet? Look at it. Witness! <laughs> you know what this is? You trying to take us money out of the lunch boxes for a living? <laughs> That's a knife. The knife. Knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? The bullet in metal weapon, a red car, all belong to the prosecutor there. <laughs> the defendant has a request. A defense, I mean. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, Rocky? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh! The knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon! Ugh. 
Wow! Und da! Und da! Und da! Great, now the tide is turning in our favor! Pretty sure, Mr. Fred! My sister, she's good as free! Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie! What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. <laughs> but this shoots a hole in your whole premeditary theory. <laughs> the prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. Uh. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Miss Prosecutor. Suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do, she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you! Look at my hair. <laughs> the powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. <laughs> oh, really now? Hey now, you're all stars. <laughs> well, this guy intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge that knife in again and again and again and again and again. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I ordered the wrong pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? What the heck? That wasn't even close. <laughs> In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. I don't think you're trying anymore. <laughs> I think it would mean that she's trying to kill the delivery boy. No, you're hurt. <laughs> she just keeps talking about killing people. She's had a violent childhood, maybe. She likes to kill rabbits. <laughs> what? Like the rabbits. serial killers do. <laughs> You've said that, but you haven't told us how you know! That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie. Shut up, loser. I believe what we, or what she just said was merely a prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. Loser! Look at my hair. <laughs> Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of a half-baked oven. Something's half baked here, alright. And it's you! Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Their actions speak for themselves. Why were you clapping? You have no proof that Miss Guy called him there. You have no proof she didn't. 
Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth. But There is no record of a call made on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. And in any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness. Why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't! That's because she didn't have a grudge! Ricky! I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How am I supposed to know? <laughs> See, we agree that there's a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels, don't you agree? Uh, I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. <laughs> this judge is a very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's sample. The record says she only stabbed him once. Oh, yeah. You say she stabbed him again and again? But you couldn't have witnessed that! Are you testing me? And I'll test you! With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Ms. Star. What? What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that the death was due to loss of blood from one stab wound. Uh -huh. You're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> I don't know the judge <laughs> <laughs> What a hunk! He's my hero, really! What about my objection? No one noticed! Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Oh, thanks. I was pleased that no one could ever make a mistake catch up for blood. But now I realize that sort of mistake happens all possible. So, you are saying you mistook something for blood? Something like that. When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. What does the picture look like again? Miss Star, I demand the witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? 
The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proven it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But that can't be. Only a professional lunch lady would be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Why is that for a because so Hmm. Harsh words, but good. <laughs> In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What, what, what was my objection? Chopped liver? But, but it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red. I don't know, really. Well, now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Okay, witness, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Oh, you know, I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? How would you hear me? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly called her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Yet, yeah, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused earlier. The chief prosecutor made it to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake who bit a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. It wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Not to self, Mrs. Wright, Mr. Wright, as we could use poisonous sneak bites. <laughs> the chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An, uh, an oil drum? Or to imagine. Well, she's beautiful, but deadly predator is one. That for woman, wow, roar. Okay, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you will. So where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She's obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal do. And what did you do then? You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should press for more details.
I'd like to see this on the floor plants just to be safe. Yeah, this face is, look on his face is like pure regret. <laughs> She was a visitor that she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet away from the car. Yeah. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yeah, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. Went over it, of course. Amazing. The cuff up queen lunch lady athlete indeed. You would have taken Healy a bear time to calm the fiends. She's like my music taking her like a hundred different jump cuts. So and you have got a new my sister that feast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Di not get away? She mentioned the muffler. What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard was her say the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yeah, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... By phone, do you mean... This cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yeah, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory. Look at my hair. It's like salmon heading upstream, you see? No, the court doesn't seem to stop. There's she prosecutor first two years of fun hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right! Near the car! There was an emergency phone on the wall! Apparently it was out of order. So she used her cell phone? Indeed. The emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should of course add this to your testimony. Things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. I saw it all how she tried to use the phone in the wall but had to use her cell instead. Made to escape? Can you be more sp specific? Specific. She brushed aside my hand when ran. It was a terrible sight to see. Uh, like a double lard pile on a fair grass. She kicked over an oil drum at me. An, an oil drum? There was an oil drum lying at the side of the scene of the crime. What do you think about that? But it's strange. Mm, what is that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah! Oh, the parking lot entrance. Detroit! 
It's Don Mikey! See you, Queen She Read a wife and all June partition! Germs! Excellent, more mysteries! I wish we could solve a few before finding more, though! So, this guy tried to run! I'm sorry, my sister's so suspicious, Mr. Wright! Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it, you have to believe me. doesn't even show a fence, so how would she have gotten I guess it does. <sighs> Why is that worth yawning so much? At first I didn't get much sleep this morning. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, 1712. This is dated the day of the crime. The murder took place three minutes after Edgeworth parked his car. If only he was held up a couple extra red lights, he wouldn't have been caught up in this whole affair. Perhaps. It just goes to show. But you never know what will happen when you run a real yellow light. Was that first turn on this? That's if they run all the way into the building. <laughs> Three minutes. He's all on play and he's scared. <laughs> he had to pee. Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against my Miss Lana Sky. 
The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who together with the chief prosecutor kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Starr, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? I don't know what you're talking about. This is me and I'll make you cough it all up. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Guy making that phone call. Huh? <laughs> I believe you see what I'm getting at. The emergency phone was on the back of side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. Why? Ah! Order! Order! What is the meaning? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. Ooh, ah. sick bird. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. Witnesses lied about. Mr. Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would. Be pointless for Miss Guy to <laughs> lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Guy using the emergency phone, it would mean Miss Star witnessed this crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, <laughs> at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All this testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. Considering her testimony, why then she was supposed to lay there that day? Security room. Take that. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm... She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are so many other places where she could have been and seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. <sighs> why? The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime, and <clears throat> in the back of the partition, is here. I remember in your testimony you said 
you brought lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star. How many years have I been getting the better of men? <laughs> to think that the tables have turned. Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order! Order! Witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. Now I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. Guilty? Is she talking about Miss Guy? Mr. Right. Doesn't this strike you as odd? <laughs> Why does this star lie? It doesn't make sense. Uh, she could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, there's they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. Most witnesses don't know this. <laughs> she wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let us review what we need. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block must make a vital difference. What would change? 